Tere arvusad vaata, et täna on meil külas üks tuntumaid Eesti juurtega teadlasi maailmas, Genetics Vante Päeva. Hello, Svante. Hi. So first of all, I would like to ask, uh, in Estonia, we like to put a lot of emphasis on your Estonian roots. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to ask, how do you feel about it? Uh, and how much have you thought about it yourself? Well, so I always say that say, Sweden is my native country. That's where I was born and grew up. But I grew up with my Estonian mother. So in some sense, this feels like my ancestral country, if you like. I grew up very much with the stories of what happened in the last century here and when I come here I sort of recognize names of places and even street names in Tallinn for example so it's a little bit like coming to my roots. Mm-hmm. Uh, how is it uh, possible to find uh, DNA from tissues which have been uh, dead for thousands and thousands of years and is it a difficult mm-hmm. process? So, yeah, so sort of what we have over the last 20-30 years worked on are then techniques to retrieve DNA that are being preserved in bones or even in sediments in soil over tens of thousands of years. And the issue with that is of course that it's very little there that has survived. You have to have very sensitive techniques. And you have to take into account that it's degraded to short pieces, it's chemically modified. So you have to take that into account when you then try to analyze it. So part of that involves techniques of how you extract and process really short, very short fragments of DNA. And the other part is really informatics, how you map those to the human genome to see which pieces may come from, say, a Neanderthal and from where in the genome. So it has these two laboratory components and an informatics component in the computers. Uh, when I uh, grew up, uh, we were taught in school that uh, Neanderthal people are our uh, ancestors. Uh, but nowadays we know that uh, Neanderthals were our, only our closest human uh, relatives and that we have uh, about one or two or more percent mm-hmm. of our genes. Uh, what does that mean and uh, which traits have we inherited mm-hmm. from the uh, Neanderthals? Yeah, so the ancestors of everyone alive today this is evolved in Africa and earlier than that there was the ancestors of Neanderthals and relatives of Neanderthals in Asia who left Africa. And then modern humans emerge in Africa and come out, start expanding outside Africa somewhere 60, 70,000 years ago. And then they meet their relatives, Neanderthals, in Europe and Western Asia. And what one has been able to show when we now have the genome of Neanderthals is that one mixed a bit. So if your genetics roots are, say, in Europe or in Asia, about 1 or 2 percent of your DNA, of your genetic material, that comes from Neanderthals. And different people today carry different pieces of the Neanderthal genome. And we're learning more and more about that certain sort of traits that may influence our propensity to get certain diseases or be protected against diseases, for example, come from Neanderthals. So there are variants, for example, that increase your risk to get diabetes that comes from Neanderthals. There are also some adaptations. There are variants of uh, genes in the immune system that protects you against the bacteria, for example, that give you ulcers in your stomach that come from Neanderthals. So there are both good things and bad things that come from Neanderthals. And different people have inherited different parts of that. You have also uh, written in your book that uh, people uh, who have more genes from the Neanderthal people uh, might feel more pain, for instance. Well, so um, there is one particular gene which is an ion channel that sits in the nerve endings in our body where that are responsible for initiating the sense of pain. And quite few people, something like 0.4% of people in, in Europe have inherited this Neanderthal variant and then they are actually slightly more sensitive to pain uh, due to that. Uh, 
Why are Denisovan people considered to be a separate branch? And which genes have we inherited from these people? Uh, so the Nisovans are the um, distant relatives of Neanderthals, if you like. They go back to a common ancestral population in the order of 400,000 years ago or so. They are known from southern Siberia, from this famous site, the Niseva Cave, there in the Altai Mountains. But they were probably widespread in Asia before, because wherever you come from in Asia, so people in China or in India, have something like 0.2-0.3% of their DNA from the Nisivans. People in Papua New Guinea, for example, have up to 5% of their DNA from the Nisivans. And we have also learned that uh, there were different groups of the Nisivans that contributed to different groups in Asia. And they have also then passed on some things, some useful things to present-day people. There's good indication, for example, that people in Tibet today have inherited a genetic variant from the Nisivans that allow you to live at high altitudes, about 3,000 meters, and absorb enough oxygen uh, from the air. Chinese scientists have uh, shocked uh, the world uh uh, by claiming that they have uh, helped uh, to make the first uh, gene-edited uh, children. Uh, what do you think is the mankind uh, ready for that, for gene-editing? Okay. It depends on what you now mean with gene-editing and in what applications. I think there is a consensus in the world, including in most scientists in China, that we should not manipulate the human germline because are the techniques we have are still not precise enough, etc. Uh, but there are many applications where you try to change a genetic variant in somatic tissues, so not in your germ cells that forms eggs or sperm, but for example in your bone marrow or in your eyes if you have particular genetic diseases. So I think we will see applications like that in the next few years. There are, of course, many applications also in agriculture, for example, or, or in other things. So, thank you very much. Uh,